Welcome to Lessons from Life, the podcast that gleams profound life lessons from everyday life stories. Hosted by Dustin Fenton and Brandon Hill. Dustin, good to see you again. It's good to see you and be with you, Brandon. Today I have a friend of mine. His name is Fenway Park which might sound like an interesting name. Fenway, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your very unique name? Yeah, so my name is actually Fenway Park. My parents wanted a unique name to go along with Park. And so when I was born, they were discussing what name they were going to go with. And they finally settled and agreed on Fenway, which was better than Kaminsky, which is what my dad wanted to name. (laughs) So yeah, and I live in Muncie, Indiana, and work for a nonprofit organization um, where we are a post secondary training institute for adults with disabilities. I understand you had a hard time getting a Facebook account. I did. Freshman year of college, finals week, I had Facebook and it was just under the name Fenway Park. And I thought my roommates had tried to hack into it. Come find out, somebody had reported and said that I had a fake account because the name Fenway Park. (laughs) So I had to contact Facebook, try to figure out how to get it back, and I finally got it back. So that's why now my Facebook account has my middle names, which I have two of them, which was great timing with it being finals week, too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, of course, the the importance of Facebook, you know, had to compete with with your finals, I guess. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) All right, well, Fenway, we understand you have a great story to tell us, so why don't you dive right in? Yeah, so I'm here to tell my story about changing my major in college. And so when I started out attending Indiana Wesleyan University, I was starting out as elementary ed and exceptional needs major. And during that process, my whole goal and dream was to become a special ed teacher. And that was my passion and my drive. And so when, when I was studying that, I took all of my exceptional needs courses that I needed to complete that degree, except for student teaching. And then I was going to be switching over to the elementary portion of, of those courses. And during the process, so I was about three years into my degree, and I was struggling because in order to get into the education program, you have to pass a state test. There's three parts to it. And when I was doing that and taking that exam, I had passed two of the three parts. And so the third part that I was struggling with was reading comprehension. And I had taken that exam probably five times and was 10 points away from passing it each time. And so was very frustrated in the midst of everything of what was I gonna do? How was I gonna get into the program? my four years at IWU was starting to come up, what was I gonna do? And I was walking to an education night class of Dr. McCracken, and I remember it from walking from my residence hall of Scripture Hall to Goodman Hall, and just frustrated of like, what is gonna, what's, what's my future gonna look like? And I've always turned to the passage of Philippians 4, 6 that, that says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. And that still continues to ring in my life now. But at that time, I I didn't know what the future was going to hold. And so walking to Goodman Hall, I just heard the Lord speak. and, And he just said, very kindly, teaching in a classroom is not where I want you. And I just heard him say that, and I just felt a complete peace. And and I was like, okay, what's this mean? And he spoke one more word, and all he said was leadership. And I said, okay. I knew at the time Indiana Westland had a leadership major, and I went to that class, and I just continued that semester because that was the beginning of a semester. It was in September. And so I had to finish strong with those courses, knowing that God didn't want me in a classroom anymore teaching and not knowing what that meant. And so I had met with some mentors and advisors 
and talk to my parents and they supported me so much in the decision of changing majors. And so I changed two weeks after God spoke into my life to the leadership program. And so that next semester is when I started those courses and was able to finish that degree within three semesters, which was great. Looking back now, how that lesson played out is just huge because after switching majors, I then was in the residence life. I was working in student development as a student worker. And so I was getting into the higher ed realm and loved that and was involved in new student orientation. And so then I pursued my master's degree in higher education from Geneva College and um, worked in higher ed for a little bit. And now I work in post-secondary, but in a nonprofit format. And so it's just amazing how God's journey in my life has worked because I'm working with adults with special needs. And so how that all interlines is really cool. That's a fun story, Fenway, of just being able to sense God's calling on your life and have it be very frustrating and unclear to, in a matter of two weeks, uh, beginning a new journey. And so my question is, did you feel like you had a lack of hope as you were kind of banging your head against that test, that standardized test, and it just wasn't working out? I am not a test taker at all. And so that was always hard. And because when I was in fourth grade, I was diagnosed with a reading comprehension disability, learning disability. And so going into a standardized test that is just fully focused on reading comprehension just added more weight and stress to it um, with having that and being able to comprehend that in in a certain allowed time frame too. And so that was hard. And so I didn't know what was going to happen if I didn't pass that. Now it's a blessing that I'm not in a classroom teaching to me because I've been able to have so many other options and abilities and being able to network and meet people all over the country too. What were those two weeks like for you? Sound like you were talking with lots of people and trying to get input from a lot of different sources to confirm what you heard and to kind of get the okay to go forward on things and a path forward as you're talking to advisors and things along those lines. What were those two weeks like? Were they hard or was it hopeful or was it transformative or or what was it like? Um, I think a good word is transformative, but also it, it made sense because it allowed me to reflect on my life before attending college because I was very active in my community back home and I was on a lot of committees and was president of different committees. And so I was in a leadership role so much in high school that it made sense. And I had never even thought of that being a route or a major and just never went down that avenue. And so it just brought a piece and it just made sense of like, no, this is who I am. I am a leader and I can go into so many different avenues with that focus. Part of me feels pretty proud of you for taking that test five times. Yeah. But I also am wondering if that was kind of a clue that this wasn't the right path. And, you know, how many more times might you have taken it before you realize that? So sometimes there are barriers in our lives for purpose. And what I think I find really interesting is, is you went in with this special needs idea, but your only experience to that point in time was what you had experienced in school up through high school. And so you got going in a major that you thought you wanted to go down that path and it didn't work out, but now you're actually doing that work at a different level. And so you took two passions of yours and have put them together really to create something that you're enjoying doing now. And I think I find that pretty neat. Yeah, it's amazing to see how that all intertwines. In God's big plan, you never know when you're in it what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's several years later, you you notice he was really working. And it's Mm -hmm. just taking time to reflect on that. And I wanted to go into exceptional needs as a teacher because 
I wanted to give back in a way that teachers were mm -hmm. helping me mm -hmm. and, and helping me learn. And so now being able to do that in the organization that I'm working with has been great because being able to talk to parents now as I'm a recruiter and do marketing for our organization, I'm talking to parents and giving them the hope mm -hmm. and the peace of their son or daughter is going to learn a job and be able to go out into the work field and hopefully live independently as well. Where before parents that had a son or daughter with a disability, they weren't sure what their son or daughter were going to be doing after they aged out of the school system. Mm -hmm. It's a different process and it's being part of something that's never been done before is awesome. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you have for people who are thinking about going to college or in college and are just finding themselves to be lost in regards to what they're supposed to do? I think it's so impactful to be very open to your professors and people in other departments, in residence life, staff members. It's amazing how many people on a college campus can speak into your life. Mm -hmm whether that is on a Christian campus or on a non-Christian campus. Because I had met with Brandon to talk about this. I had talked with my RD at the time and met with my advisor. And so there was just so many different people that spoke into my life and confirmed things. But then I was also able to pick their brain of like, well, what's your journey? Because everyone has a journey not everyone's going straight from college with a plan or even starting college with a plan. I had friends in college that they started out as they were going to go into pre-med and now they work in business. So now it's just a, a big flip and that's okay. An individual's never been able to take some of those courses and learn that material before. And so having that openness of what does this look like? And I think that's huge into what first year experience is on a college campus and is helping freshman students or transfer students trying to figure out what they might want to do as a career. This is a little bit of a side note, but Fenway talked about being a student leader in new student orientation. And during his senior year, your leadership project was on evaluating the program. And the results of that led to a major change in new student orientation that many people believe was responsible for a 10% increase in retention rates over the next few years. And so really some of the early work that Fenway did led to the success for a lot of students who came years after him. That's great to hear that it infected the retention rate because that, that's huge. And that's what studies show. You know, first year experience is huge on students' retention at the university. The confidence and really the blossoming confidence that Fenway felt in those first two weeks, where have you been able to kind of tap back into that? Or when have you had a chance to tap back into that? And that may be a, a totally different story altogether, <laughs> but have you since that time been able to kind of go, oh yeah, I reaffirmed and reassured into that? After grad school, after I finished my master's degree, I took a job in residence life. And, and so this is probably a whole nother story of a, a job change, but I moved to Nebraska to work at a community college out there and was very excited about it and was opening a brand new residence hall and was excited to be bringing leadership and community into that residence hall and to those students there. And I felt God talk to me then and say, this isn't where I want you. And that was six months into that job. And so I had resigned after that semester and moved back to Indiana, not knowing what the next journey was. I had applications out there and it just confirmed so much of God's presence and putting my faith in him because in that I then returned home, became a caregiver for my grandparents before I took this job three months later down here in Muncie, Indiana. And so being able to be close to them was, was a great opportunity and it just provided so much peace in that and knowing that I was listening to him again 
of, I left a position of not knowing what the future was going to hold, but yet he continues to provide no matter what. That's great. That's cool to be able to just lean in on that. Yeah. Well, Fenway, thanks so much for sharing your story and your journey. And it's exciting to see the work that you're doing and the impact that you're making on people's lives. So thanks for spending some time with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Fenway. All right. Well, take care, everybody. We're looking forward to sharing another story with you next week. Thanks for listening to Lessons from Life. We hope that you have learned a lesson today that will help you to be more fulfilled in life's journey. If you were inspired by today's episode, please subscribe and review. You can find Lessons from Life at LessonsFromLifeForYou.com. That is with the number four and the letter U. You can also find links to all of our social media on our website. We would love to hear the valuable lessons that you have learned from your life experiences. 